Hey guys, and welcome back to your inside look around college football and the NCAA. We're heading into week 11 now. We had kind of a slow week last week, but we're finally at that time of year where NCAA basketball crosses over with NCAA football, and that's just the best for me. <laughs> I know that Tanner and I have really been enjoying it. I don't know about y'all, but with the college football play, playoff rankings coming out this past week, we have a lot to talk about and get into. We have a big week ahead of us with Auburn and Alabama and Penn State, Minnesota. So we have a lot to get into here today. Yeah, you know, we're going to kind of dissect these um, college football playoff rankings for the first part of the show. And um, the first thing that I kind of wanted to talk about was um, the surprise team to me who was in the um, college football playoff rankings. The first this is only the first one that's out. I believe there's going to be three or four more rankings that come out when it's all said and done. But so far, um, honestly, I got to say the surprise team um, to me who is in the in the rankings is Navy. You know, Navy is always a team that usually can scrap every year. I know last year they had a relatively down year, but it seems like they have rebuilt it and. Um, they're they're winning football games this year, and it, it's good to see a military program being ranked in the top 25. So I got to shout out Navy really quick. Yeah, I mean, happy to see Navy up in the top 25. Not something we get to see every season, uh, an Armed Forces team be in the top 25, so that was cool. Uh, at first look, I, I wanted to say Minnesota being number 17, but we'll get into why I'm not going to pick them for my surprise team later. Um my biggest surprise was seeing three teams from the American in the top 25, uh, in Cincinnati, Memphis, and SMU. And, you know, good for the American Conference. They have three teams now in the top 25, all one-loss teams. I mean, who knows where their seasons could go, and who knows I think, how, many comp how many of those teams might get into a New Year's Six Bowl. I think the winner of that conference can for sure expect to get a, a, um, a New Year's Six Bowl for sure. I mean... They like you said, it's it's competitive conference. They have three top twenty five teams, so um, I think the winner of that conference championship game can expect a spot um, in a New Year's Six Bowl for sure. Oh yeah, um, absolutely. Sort of the next thing I kind of want to talk about is just kind of round up about the top top ten and and where some of these things stands. What what was your biggest surprise when the when you figured out who the top four were and who was in the top ten? Well, okay, so I think the first big surprise is that Clemson is left out of the top four. And I, I think the reason why that is, obviously, LSU and Alabama will play each other this week, so you'll have one go down. And Penn State has the opportunity to go down this week when they play Minnesota. So, I mean, Clemson, it's not the death of their season or anything like that. No. Like, they're very much so still in it. And they're, I mean, they're 9-0 and right now. The, so The first, to me, the first playoff rankings don't really mean anything. Yeah. Um, you know... I think the playoff committee just put Penn State at four because they can. And I think eventually um, it, it'll all work itself out. Like, put Penn State does deserve right now at this point in the season to be ranked ahead of Clemson just based off strength of schedule and all that kind of good stuff. So, you know, sure, reward Penn State, give them the four spot. Like you said, Penn State, they got a game against Minnesota. If they win this week, keep them there. Uh, and then they got a big game against Ohio State coming up in a couple weeks. So, Absolutely. you know, the winner of that game um, will likely play either Minnesota or Wisconsin in the Big Ten Championship game. So if I'm Clemson, all you got to do is take care of business. But you cannot lose or get upset because if you're a one-loss Clemson team with your strength of schedule, I mean – there's obviously a lot of football left, but you would need some chaos to happen if you go down. Some absolute chaos. I mean, like, like we talk about every, almost every episode on this show, a two-loss team is not going to make the playoffs. So I also want to talk about Georgia. Um, I know that I've been giving Georgia a lot of heat lately. And, um, <laughs> That's I, an understatement. Um, Georgia is a team to me that I guess I understand why the committee has them at number six. They have wins against Florida and Notre Dame. Those are against two top 15 teams. So I guess that kind of nullifies that really bad loss to South Carolina, but Georgia will will be its own enemy um, at the end at the end of the season. You know they will probably have an opportunity to um, play in the SEC championship game again, and they will probably find a way to lose 
to either LSU or Alabama. They always seem to find a way to to lose these really important conference games and um, obviously the conference championship game. I, I just can see it now. They'll they'll end up shooting themselves in the foot and um, probably get left out of the college football playoff again. But like you said, I mean, all they have to do is win the SEC East, yeah. right? Like That's They just have to make it to the conference championship game with one loss, win that game, and you're probably in. And but I don't <coughs> think a team like Georgia can beat a team like LSU or Alabama, and I think everyone knows that. So another team that I want to talk about is Oklahoma. And if I'm Oklahoma, um, I wouldn't be freaking out by any means, you know, Oregon and Utah were ranked ahead of you, but that's only because um, they maybe because they played nine games. OU, you've only played eight. When it comes to their strength of schedule, they played Texas, they played Kansas State. They still have plenty of opportunities to build up that resume. They go to Waco and will most likely take on a nine and O Baylor team if Baylor can take care of business this Saturday against TCU. And then they have the Bedlam game, and OSU will likely be 8-3 and three in the Bedlam game and will still be ranked. So if I'm OU, you know, I'm just trying to get to the Big 12 championship game at 11-1. and one. And if they play Texas or Baylor or whoever they, they'll play again, um, they'll most likely be ranked as well. And, you know, the committee, it'll be interesting to see if Oregon – wins the Pac-12 with one loss, or Utah wins the Pac-12 with one loss, and if OU wins the Big 12, Big 12 with one loss, who are they going to pick, you know? Yeah, I mean, that's a tough decision. Oregon and Utah both sitting at 7-8 and eight right now, 8-1, and one. and you got to wonder, if Oregon hadn't lost that game to Auburn... Where would they be where in would all they of be? this? You yeah, know? exactly, Absolutely. because, I mean, then the committee really has some hard questions yeah. to ask themselves, because Auburn has looked great all season. Yeah. So, I mean, they, you know, they, they lost to LSU and I believe Florida was the other team that beat Auburn. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if I'm Auburn, you know, you lost to two pretty solid teams and, you know, just keep chugging away. But you still have a win over Oregon. You still have a win against Oregon. Yeah. And you still got to play Alabama. Mm -hmm. There's so, a lot. There's a lot of football. Left I still for a believe, lot of too, they got to play Georgia. Uh, the Battle of the Hedges. That, that, that's a rivalry game that's usually played. Um, every year, let's let's see, let's double check to see if that's that's true. Well, Tanner's but, double checking that. Um, you're right, though, Tanner. Oklahoma, a lot still to play for. I mean, just like you were talking about earlier, the first round of the college football playoff rankings don't matter because there's just so much football left. I mean, it's good to know the positioning and how the committee is going to evaluate everything. But like you said, it's still so early. So yes. Auburn does play Georgia November 16th, so they still got Georgia and Alabama, so maybe they can split between those games, and it'll be interesting to see what Auburn wants to do with Gus Miles on. Um, and the last playoff team that's ranked that I'd like to talk about is Baylor, um, and then I'll give you an opportunity to talk about Minnesota. Uh, but Baylor, to me, you know, I understand they're undefeated. They have wins against Oklahoma State and Kansas State. Kansas State's 16 and Okie State's 23. I'm not quite sure why the committee has them at 12 right now, but if they can take care of business against TCU, they will have two very huge back-to-back -back games in Waco against Oklahoma and Texas. So um, it'll be very vital and huge for them to just, you know, um, their head coach has this thing right now where they have their opponent on the wall, and it's it's in order of their schedule, and it's just 1-0. 1-0, 1-0. If you're Baylor, you can't look ahead to OU. you got to take care of business against um, TCU, and hopefully you'll find yourself in a position where you'll be 9-0 undefeated in Waco, Texas, taking on a blue blood in the Oklahoma Sooners. That game's going to be a huge resume builder for both teams. So. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. And Baylor Bears and Minnesota are very much so in the same category. Both undefeated. Both rank extremely low. Both but have huge opportunities ahead of them. Bigs, exactly. The bulk, the thick of their schedule is in front of them. I'm glad you were talking about that with Baylor because it's the exact same with Minnesota. They haven't really played anyone yet. I would say the best person they played is probably either Maryland or or maybe Purdue, depending on how you look at it. But, I mean, they, they play Penn State this week. They play number 18 right now, Iowa, next week. 
You have a breather with Northwestern, and then you Wisconsin. go on and play Wisconsin. Battle for that X. So, I mean, they have a lot to play for That's still and a lot to prove. And, I mean, if Penn State still has a lot to prove as well in their Big Ten challenges. They, the bulk of their schedule is coming up, too. Absolutely. Because to me, Penn State, the best team they've beat all season has been Michigan. Michigan, I still don't know how to feel about that team. Um, but they got some robbery games coming up against Michigan State and Ohio State. We're about to find out if Penn State's really legit or not, too, because they, they got Minnesota, and then they got Ohio State. So, you know, it would be interesting to see. And we usually talk about this with reference to Michigan but the bit or Ohio State, but the Big Ten always seems to play itself out of the playoff. And I'm kind of eager to watch for, are they going to do that this year yeah. again? And, you know, you could make a case, too, like let's say Penn State – you know, loses to Minnesota, and then Minnesota loses to Iowa or Wisconsin, um, but then Ohio State loses to Penn State, and then you got the winner coming out of the Big Ten with one loss or a scenario like that. I think a one loss or undefeated Big 12 or Pac-12 team would be just as good as a one loss or undefeated Big Ten team. I really do. I think the Pac-12 has been underrated and kind of disrespected all year, and I think the Big 12 has always been underrated and hopefully at some point in time, one of these knuckleheads on ESPN or Fox will step up and, and really just give the Big 12 the praise because they're, they're sometimes known for playing themselves out of playoffs too, for sure. That's true. But I'll say Oklahoma seems to pretty consistently get yeah. in these days. Yeah. But we'll see what happens. Still big football ahead. I mean, you know, a lot, a lot could go on. Absolutely. So... That's just kind of how we wanted to discuss how the playoff rankings went went down, and there's still the whole month of November and the championship Saturday to, to come. So, obviously, um, the two main games that everybody wants to talk about this week is Minnesota and Penn State, LSU and Alabama. We'll briefly discuss Penn State and Minnesota. I think James Franklin will get a win, and I do think Penn State will come out victorious and beat Minnesota. You know, I agree with that. Just like I was talking about earlier, I haven't really seen a lot from Minnesota that tells me that they're going to be able to beat Penn State. I mean, they haven't really played anyone thus far, and they haven't looked super spectacular in most of their wins, especially early in the season. So, you know, I'm glad they finally found their rhythm. I'm glad they're getting some level of respect. Maybe it's not the respect they feel they deserve, but I don't think that they're going to be able to beat a team like Penn State. But I hope I'm wrong. Yeah, I'd love to see Minnesota that's what I mean, well. play. And I'm sure Minnesota thinks that that's what everybody else thinks. So they're going to come out with some fire under that butt for sure. And hopefully Absolutely. they come out and prove us wrong. And then obviously, probably the biggest game all year up to this point, the number two LSU Tigers go to Tuscaloosa, take on the number three Alabama Crimson Tide. Coach O has a great record against top 10 teams. However, he has not beat Alabama and you know, you got to beat Alabama if you if you want to play for that SEC championship. And I think this is the year that Joe Burrows and LSU gets it done. I you do. know, I've heard an expression recently that was, you don't get rich betting against Nick Saban. No. You, you just don't. don't. And I don't want to don't want to 79 and 4. He's 79 and 4. They are in T-Town. In Tuscaloosa. They're in T-Town. I'm going to take the Crimson Tide here. I think that they are a high-functioning team regardless of who's in or out. I think Nick Saban is the Bill Belichick of college football, oh, for sure. and I don't think anyone's going to stop him. I think LSU gives them a run for their money, but I think, unfortunately, LSU comes it, out. It's key loss. for LSU to get off to a good start. You don't want to have to come back from behind. It is good. It is, In my opinion, it is a good thing that they are playing this game during the day. It's not a night game. Yeah. Um, so... If you're LSU, you just want to—you don't want to shoot yourself in the foot. You can't afford to shoot yourself in the foot when you go up against a team like Alabama. But um, Kirk Herbstreit made an interesting point. Will Alabama, you know, if they lose this game, are they done? Kirk Herbstreit said, "Yes, I would have to agree with that. Their strength of schedule has it's not soft. been has not been impressive to me. They're they're going to play LSU and Auburn, and those are going to be the hardest games they play all season. Alabama has to win this game." Um, if they want to, if they want to make the playoffs, with the committee rewarding high level non conference play and sure. high level non conference games, sure. you have to win yeah. against LSU if you want to stay alive. And the only reason why that you know, I'm glad you said that. I know we're running out of time. Ohio State has had a relatively iffy SOS, but the difference between how Ohio State is handling business, they are killing everybody they played. You know, nobody's given them a game yet. So until somebody gives them a game. Ohio State, you know, will probably stay at number one. But anyways, guys, we have a big week of college football this week. 
Hope you guys enjoy the games and enjoy the weekend and take care, y'all. Y'all be safe. Appreciate the listen, guys. Can't wait to see y'all next week.